Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll be testing out this analog pH sensor from the folks over at DF Robot. Like the name suggests, this device measures the pH of a solution and responds with an analog voltage to communicate that reading. This is in contrast to sensors that respond with digital protocols like I2C or UART, and in some ways the fact that it's analog actually makes this device easier to work with. All we need to do is find a way to map the voltage readings to pH values and we're good to go. But first, what exactly is it that we're measuring? pH represents the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution, and it does so on a scale of 0 to 14. A pH of 7 represents a neutral solution, and this would be something like pure water. Less than 7 would be on the acidic side of the scale, and the closer you get to 0, the more acidic the solution is. Something like vinegar or battery acid would be on this side of the scale. Greater than 7 would be on the alkaline or basic side of the scale, and the closer you get to 14, the more basic the solution is. Something like baking soda or lye would be on this side of the scale. The chemistry behind the exact definition of acidity and alkalinity has to do with the behavior of hydrogen ions in the solution, but I'm not a chemist, so I won't go into any of those details here. Now that we have an idea of how this sensor behaves, let's take a look at what the kit contains. First off, we have the probe. You put this end into the solution you're measuring. Right now it's in a neutral solution. And then this end connects to the circuit board. This end of the circuit board has another type of connector where this cable plugs into. Here's where it breaks out the ground, voltage input, and analog output wires. These are what you connect to your microcontroller or whatever else you want to handle the analog readings. If you have an Arduino, you're all set. DF Robot has published an Arduino library that handles the measurements and calibration and everything. You just plug it in, download their library, and you can start using it as is. They even have a Python library for the Raspberry Pi, but you will need an analog to digital converter since the Raspberry Pi doesn't have analog input. DF Robot also makes one of these 16-bit converters that works with the Raspberry Pi. And just from looking at their code, I can tell that this was the intended setup for this sensor. But I won't be using Arduino or Raspberry Pi, and instead I'll be using this Pixel.js. Now, that means I'll need to write my own library for converting the analog readings to pH values, but that's not that bad. And we'll start by just printing out the analog readings onto the screen. So I've connected everything to the pixel with the blue wire connected to the A0 analog pin. And here I've opened my browser to the Esprino Web IDE. The first thing I need to do is connect to the pixel over Bluetooth. Now I can enter in code in this REPL on the left to run it on the pixel. This line of code will read the analog value from that A0 pin. So this is what the sensor is currently returning. And remember that right now the probe is inserted into that mostly neutral solution that it came with. You can see that there's a little bit of variance, but for the most part it stays around 0.42. Over here, in the larger space, we can enter in code that will all be sent to the pixel at once. So I'm going to create a watch that's looking for changes in button 1, and I'll set repeat to be true because I want to be able to press this button more than once. And I'll set the edge to rising so that it detects the button press and not the release. To write to the screen of the pixel, the easiest way is to just call terminal.println, which means print line and whatever you pass to that method is printed to the screen. All I have to do now is set the value of x to be the result of calling analog read on that pin A0. Now, whenever button 1 is pressed, it will call this function, which prints the analog value of pin A0 to the pixel screen. Cool. Now I'll just send that code over to the pixel and then call the save function to flash everything into memory. That way I can turn the pixel off and on, and it'll still have all of the code loaded into it. So here I've got the pixel with my code loaded in, and this is where button 1 is. So you can see when I press that button, it prints out the reading from our analog input, and it'll do that every single time I press the button. Right now the probe is still in that neutral solution that it came in, which is probably just water. But the kit comes with four bottles of solution, two each of two different buffers. One of them has a pH of 7, and one of them has a pH of 4. We can use these two known solutions to calibrate our code so that when we take an analog measurement, 
we can predict what the pH is. In order to do that, I'll first need to take a measurement of each one of these solutions and see what the analog reading is. So I've poured a bit of solution 4 into this measuring glass, and then I've rinsed the tip of the probe in a bit of distilled water. Notice that the distilled water is reading about 0.33 or 0.34, which is lower than the neutral solution that came in the cap of the probe, which was reading about 0.42. This means that either the solution in the probe wasn't actually neutral, or the distilled water isn't quite neutral. So that's interesting. After cleaning the probe off really well, I've put it in the pH 4 solution and started to take measurements. They seem to have a good amount of variance, so I let it sit in the solution for a few minutes. After a while, it was clear that the reading here was somewhere around 0.615. So this is the value I've recorded for pH 4. Now I'm cleaning the probe again in more distilled water, and the reading is back to about 0.33. Next I poured a bit of the pH 7 solution and started taking measurements. Again, there was a good amount of fluctuation at first, but it settled to around 0.455, so that's what I've recorded as pH 7. That means that my distilled water is actually on the basic side, since it's measuring in the opposite direction of the acidic pH 4 solution. Now it's time for a bit of math. But don't worry, it's pretty easy math that most of you will remember from algebra. Or if you're just getting into algebra, hopefully this will be familiar to you. Since we're trying to calculate pH based on our analog readings, we're basically deriving a function where our analog readings are the x input for our function, and that'll be the x-axis here. And the pH values are the y output of our function, so that'll be the y-axis. Now I can plot those two measurements I just took onto the graph by locating their approximate analog value for x and pH value for y. The function we're deriving will be a linear function, so I'll just draw an approximate line between these two points. Now in theory, this line gives us everything we need to calculate the pH from an analog reading. So if we have an analog reading of 0.7, it should be approximately a pH of 2. Pretty simple, right? But We'd like our microcontroller to be able to do this calculation for us, since it's not very practical to carry around graph paper and do this lookup every time we want to make a measurement. Luckily, since this fits the basic definition of a linear function, we have some basic algebra on our side. You might remember this thing called the slope-intercept form, and it looks a lot like this. And from this formula, we can compute the value of y, which is our pH, from a given x, which is our analog reading as long as we know these parameters m and b, m being the slope of our line, and b being the y-intercept of our line. So now we need to calculate our slope and our intercept. You might remember how to calculate the slope using the mnemonic rise over run, which basically means it's the change in y divided by the change in x. So in this case, that'll be 4 minus 7 divided by 0.615 minus 0.455. And if you do the math, that ends up being 3 divided by 0.16, or in other words, negative 18.75. And to calculate our intercept, we can just follow this back using one of our known points. And we get approximately 15.53. If you do a visual check to confirm, you can see that this is about where our line hits the y-axis. So we did everything right. Now if we have an unknown point, let's say we get the analog reading 0.5, we can calculate y using the slope-intercept formula. So that'll be our slope times our x value plus our intercept. And if you do the math, that ends up being about 6.15, which would be our pH. And if you do a visual confirmation, it is on our original line about where 6.15 would be. Cool. Now we have a function that we can turn into code. So if we go back to our Asprino IDE, add that constant slope and the constant intercept, and then compute y based on those parameters, y will now be our calculated pH. I'll go ahead and chop off the number to two decimal places, just so it's easier to read. Now I can send the code and then save the state, and now if I take a reading of my distilled water, you can see that it's a pH of about 9. So it is slightly basic. And then if I pour out some of my pH 4 solution, 
you can see that it's measuring at approximately four. Yay, that's exactly what it should be. And if I pour out a bit of my pH seven solution, you can see that it's measuring about seven. So it appears that we have a working pH sensor with a digital display now. Next, I decided to test a bit of distilled white vinegar. According to Google, this should be somewhere around a pH of 2.4, but it's measuring a bit higher than that. This could be either because this is vinegar intended for culinary use and the labeled acidity isn't exact, or it could be because the sensor isn't as precise outside of our four and seven range. Maybe it's not a linear function after all, but I'll need to find an accurate buffer solution outside of that range to really test it. Luckily for most of my uses, the four to seven range is where I want the most accuracy anyway. There are a number of reasons why you might wanna know the pH of something. For instance, I do a lot of canning and pickling, and that's a situation where there's some really nasty bacteria that can grow on food if it's preserved with a pH above about 4.6. I also do a lot of wine and cider brewing. That's a situation where you're working with raw ingredients. So you might get one batch of apples that's really acidic, and the next batch of apples might not be acidic enough. That'll change how the fermentation goes, as well as the flavor profile at the end. But if you measure the pH ahead of time, you can adjust things and get exactly what you're looking for. Other applications might include water quality tests, either for drinking water or for water used in agriculture or a hydroponic setup, or even for testing natural sources of water for evaluating environmental quality. You can also just test random things for the fun of it and see what the pH is. It's a fun way to introduce basic chemistry concepts by exploring the properties of things around us. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, bye.